This is the Power Power Podcast. My name is Sarah of Underground Crowds. We hit Bible topics, smash smash, book studies, punch out some songs here and there, and light up his word to strengthen our souls. Thanks for listening. Okay, we're in part two. What's our topic again? What are we talking about? No, what did I name it? Oh, that's Redeemed of the Lord Say So. Part two, let's pray. Um, Lord, I pray that you would walk us through and help us divide um, what it is we think we're doing for you and what it is you've actually called us to do. This is a path I'm still walking afresh upon. We have a, we're not lacking any ideas. And we're, and sometimes we get wrapped up in our, our ideas and we make things very complicated. Or we get frustrated because it didn't work out how we wanted it to. Or we, we hit another wall. And all the while you're trying to tell us that that wasn't what you had for us. And it is hard for us because we're, we get wrapped around even with our identity, with our emotions, with our, um, with our time, the time we've spent um, on these exploits the, the, and how much sense it makes to us to do. Remind us today that we that what you have for us is your idea. It isn't based in us. It's something that you placed in us. And a calling that you came up with. Um, I pray that we would turn around some of... I have lots of things I need to turn around. And, and in some areas, bear a cross... Because there are things that are not come to fruition. There are things that I'm still frustrated about and walking through. There are, there are definitely areas where I resist. And I pray that we navigate and unfold and, and, and uh, shine a light on um, the struggle that I think a lot of us have. In Jesus' name, amen. So obviously we're talking about believers today, um, or maybe um, those that think they're believers. And some of the um, the things that we do uh, that we assume God has put His stamp of approval on, because these are th- these are sacraments, if you will. This is the category we're talking about. These are works. These are ways that we feel we're blessing others. These are um, um, things that we've spent time on. These are things that we're pursuing. Um, And as a person who has gone down every last flipping rabbit trail. Um, I think I can say, I mean, as, as much as I might, you know, still be navigating this path, I think that I can say, um, where things are the most uncomfortable is usually where he wants me to be. Um, see, when we set out here, and we're going to, I don't think I, I talked about Jeremiah yesterday, so we can quickly go to Jeremiah. But one thing that we're going to hone in on, and I'll keep, I'll bring up the topic again with the Lord about, um, a book to study, but as of yet, um, I don't have that leading necessarily. So Jeremiah, remember yesterday we talked about how, you know, ministry is his idea. It's not our idea. And the, the Great Commission, Matthew 28, is his 
thing. Um, but it seems to me, be, and when we're wavering in between the, the, the Great Commission and getting saved and going back and forth, it seems to me one of the ways we try to get out of that no man zone is by coming up with stuff to do for the, oh, oh it's queen of this. Um, to the point, I want to say this, to the point that I lost total track of the fact that I was a, a songwriter um, and that that was something God had placed in me. Um, because for me, it was like, well, just whatever keeps you busy. So, actually, um, my dream, even though I did have people periodically um, come into my life and, and tell me, you know, hey, you should probably do something with this. To me, um, it was just more of a question of getting busy in churchy things. And so, I wanted to start a camp. Um, I had a great idea for starting a camp, you know quote unquote, um, I actually wanted to have a camp that helped people get off welfare um, and taught them trades or like a trade camp and with um, Christ, uh, emphasis on Christ. And, um, you know, for me, I, you know, that was something I wanted to do. Um, and since I didn't have the stamina or the character, nor was I willing got, uh, to let God work in that area, um, and and the thing is, it's more of a um, it's a walk with the Lord, right? We're going to talk about David, but it's a walk with the Lord that happens, bef you know, before um, that directive, uh, the the salvation, the the growing, the trusting, the staying in His Word, the praying, and then that that moment where you're like, God for, for real wants me to do this. And I never got that moment with camping. It was just something I, I busied myself with. But looking back, um, there was a time, and here's where the one of the problems arises. Um, <clears throat> since I came up with it, um, I got myself off of it really fast. And so I know when I made a wrong turn. I know exactly when I made a wrong turn. Um, it was, a, I was my last, it was the last summer before my senior year. So it was the last like school summer, you know, where you do, where you do things because you can, you don't have a real job yet. You, you're going to go back to college and so, um, I've told this story before. It was the summer I decided I was going to depend on myself and, and, and get a real job. Um, and it wasn't so much that I got a job. It was that I decided to take on this um, responsibility of paying for... I never had money from the word go. Responsibility of paying for college, do the right thing and go get a real job and and not do camp ministry for that last summer. And I had done it all the way up, all the way through. That was the summer I got Lyme's disease. But I know that that is the summer that it started to go downhill. And before we get all, you know, specula speculatory, um, I know that because I had decided I was going to do camp ministry. And then I took that off the shelf. And I started to take the reins. And then I walked down a path um, and that was short-sighted. Um, and no longer did I make myself available even with, you know, <clears throat> um, even within, you know, maybe I, don't, don't start overthinking um, 
the circumstances. Oh, am I here because I manipulated this? No, just keep walking with the Lord and depending on him. And he has a very good way of not, you know, that, not that way. And then over here. But I know I got off that path that summer. Um, I was, and it wasn't about job, no good job, camp, blah, 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 blah. It was about my dependence shifted. My dependence took a turn. My dependence went off the rails. And so let's look at um, this directive to Jeremiah. Um, now the word of the Lord came to, and there's lots of familiar uh, phrases that are going to be used here. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you, this is Psalm 139, before I formed you in the womb, God is speaking scripture. So when you are wondering where you're going to find this directive from the Lord, look no further than his very word. Um, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And be uh, chapter one, verse four, did I say that? And before you were born, I consecrated you. And I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Alas, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak because I am a youth. Where have we heard that before? You know, in my case, I was when God was calling me. Uh, this might be a really long podcast, but when God was calling me um, to. And he hasn't made all the dots really clear what exactly it's going to look like. All I know right now is that it scares me. Um, and one of the main reasons it scares me is because of my age. Well, this guy's like, I mean, does it matter? I'm not talking about age now. We are most often when a calling has been put on our life, if there isn't an element of it that's overwhelming, here are signs that you might have made it up. If there isn't an element that is overwhelming, it might not be from God. I'm like, I'm too old to do this. This guy, I'm, I'm too young to do this. These callings are outside of ourselves. We're not going to come up with something that is, we might come up with something that we we um, don't find attainable right now, like running a marathon. Yeah, I definitely got to train for that. We can get our mind around that. But we're like, yeah, I, you know, with the right amount of training, I'll get into the mar marathon and I'll, and I'll get the job done. But we've got to understand that a calling from God is not from us. And one of the signs is that it's, it looks more difficult than, the difficulty looks above and beyond what we can achieve. It's overwhelming. Because everywhere I send you, do not say, I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm a youth. This is verse seven, because everywhere I send you, you shall go. And all that I command you, you shall speak. And do not be afraid of them. Remember our last podcast, we talked about not being afraid. For I am with you to deliver you. See, when we start operating with our grandiose ideas, who... Who have we left on the shelf? Now he might we might have this, you know, vision that he's like up there over, you know, in charge over all. I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not I'm not an atheist. I, I you know, I wouldn't be doing this holy thing. I'm definitely a Christian, but I'm operating 
with my own imagination, with my own idea, with my own strength, with my own sort of, you know, uh, compass, with my own, um, you know, all the, all the all the stuff that we need to do to get the job done that we came up with, the job that we came up with to begin with, to get the job done. And it's really, really a practical atheist. This is why our churches line the streets and there's not a Holy Spirit to see in any of them. The churches don't operate according to the Holy Spirit. They don't let the Holy Spirit guide their structure, their service, their future, their ministries, their relationships. Holy Spirit's not part of it. It's functioning atheists with the cross on the top of the steeple. Because our callings are not from us. We don't just come up with stuff to do in a churchy way. We wait patiently before the Lord. Lean in and ask. But it takes humility. And a lot of us don't have time for that humility nonsense. But what we risk when we're not humble is just doing a church empty thing. Like whitewashed tombs. It's dead. The works are dead. I didn't say do that. Ah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I didn't say. Let's let's look at David. Um, I just want to first before we look at David, look at five points. Calling is hard. It is, in fact, more than what we can do. Two. It might be something we don't want to do, as we saw with Jeremiah, as we saw with Joshua, as we saw with Moses. No thanks. Find somebody else. How many times have I said, no thanks, find somebody else to God concerning this? And what was it exactly? It was just satanic. It was just demonic stuff. And I would have to, I would, it was just rebellion. It was plain old, I am not doing that rebellion. Like a three-year-old. Like a three-year-old. Because it triggered something on purpose. It triggered something in me that I was unwilling to yield. That vulnerability I was unwilling to go to. Your calling is going to require you to be vulnerable. It's a requirement. Only vulnerable people, humble people are receptive. He's not handing you a map and saying, go for it. He's handing you this thing that you cannot do in your own strength and saying what? I'm with you. What does that imply? Just I'm with you. There's just worth no. I'm with you because you're supposed to lean in. It's not I'm with you go. It's I'm with you lean. Wow, this was a this was a news flash for me. The do 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 Christian, the do next next next. My list is you know, I got forty five things on my list and thirty more to come, and it's only eight o'clock in the morning. I just we're in a habit of being habitually away from the spirit of God. Because he will require us to slow down. He will require humility. He will require vulnerability. He will require us to give up our plans. He will. And maybe this thing is something we feel we cannot do. Of course. If we could do it, we wouldn't need his spirit. And I can do all things through him who strengthens me. 
Why do you think we have these promises? Christianity is not DIY. Christianity is do it with God. D-I-W-G, if you need an acronym. Please don't get a tattoo. Again, this requires us to lean it completely upon him. And goes without saying, what I'm looking at to do for him is quite often not something he has not asked us to do. That's sobering. But if you think about it, it's not relational. What has God primar primarily called us to this relationship with him? And I remember the day he told me to sing. And it fell out of the sky. I think I was walking down the hall to go get the kid or something, you know. It definitely wasn't what I, you know, my agenda. And I didn't have anything but a computer and my guitar. I didn't even have a microphone at that point. But I made the mistake of thinking of this as a to-do list from God. To walk off and then, you know, check off the list. Instead of teach me how to lean. Because at the beginning, it wasn't overwhelming. I, I write songs. I will write songs if nobody's ever, nobody ever hears them. I always have. And it's always been, except in high school, but even in high school, it was, it was a way to serve. I can honestly say that because it wasn't me that was looking for opportunities to play. It was my friends that were like, you are going to be in our band. Or we need you to sing for our class. I remember one of them had like a assignment they had to do. So there I was singing one of my blues songs in high school class. But that's, that's what I, you know, that's what I was going to do. But when it got overwhelming, and when it re required vulnerability, and when it required longevity, and when it required um, fight, a fight, it was like, can we just go back to I just write songs? Wash them down the sink? I'd like to go back to that when I'm oblivious to what's going on in the spiritual realm when people aren't riding my butt with criticisms. It was a real struggle to take what my good idea was, just to write a song for a service or whatever at my women fancy to, I'm calling you to a battlefield. I was like, this is more than I can handle. I'm too old for this. Are you sure? Steep amount of... Just give me the to-do list. Steep amounts. There was no way I was going to be vulnerable to vast amounts of people. No. I don't know if I ever told, I mean, yes, I know I've told people about my background or my, you know, my parents never even called for the electrician. Dishwasher broke down. Mm -hmm. They did it themselves. We are, we were DIY from the word go. 
We didn't take anybody's opinion, nor did we care. And God wants me to be vulnerable, be able to navigate people, not my idea. Not something I can do in my strength. My mouth. Mm -mm. My ego, my pride, all of it. He was taking it all to the table. He was the shining a light on all of it. And I would, I would submit that if you are pouring service down the sink, it is not going anywhere. It's time to hang it up Maybe keep it to where you can look at it, especially if it's a talent that God's given you. Keep it where you can look at it and say, this is yours. And I am going to humble myself. And I'm going to seek your face. And I'm going to read this scripture. And when you ask me to pick that up, that is when I pick that up. He, he can only bring the in, increase. God brings the increase. So let's go to David and read really quick. And David gets this grandiose idea of building God's temple, right? It sounds good. It looks good on paper. He probably has ideas of how he wants how he wants it to look. Why not him? Um, there is such you know, and he brings an emotional draw in there in there, and he's like, "Look at this!" And the ark is there, and you know, it's all <sighs> women are really good at this. We explode it way out the you know, but God must want this because um, we're good at that. We're really good at that, and so he's. He's whining to Nathan. And this is the kicker. This part is the kicker. Nathan goes with it. And when you really start to navigate God's will in your life, you are going to find that the people that you thought would go along with you and support you are no longer there. So prep yourself. Nathan is telling him he should. And it's not from God. Remember, this is the Nathan in the chapter before. Oh no. This is the same Nathan that was like, you're the man. After he committed adultery with Bathsheba. So he was not, you know, MIA. Who's this clown on the scene? He was trusted. Let's read. Shut up, Sarah. Now it came about when the king lived in the house and the Lord had given him rest on every side from all his enemies. He got ideas. This is Sarah's version. That the king said to Nathan, the prophet, see now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells within tent curtains. Do not, do not take that space that you have, that stillness that you have. This is all from experience, yo. And fill it with something that God is not telling you to do. Oh, and it's tempting. God must want this. God must, you know, I, I've got an extra five minutes. I need to fill it with that. I need to do that. I need to have another sport this week. I need to take my kids to five sports during the week. Oh, we need a lesson in this. Just stop. Just stop. Learn to let the space be. Nathan said to the king, go. Remember the go part? Oh, yeah. I'll take the to-do list and I'll go right out from underneath your spirit. I'm going. And do all that is in your mind. That should have been his first clue. For the Lord is with you. Sarah. 
Says who? But in the same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, They had a plan. They obviously love God. And God went, Oh, no. <laughs> Let's shift that. They weren't, I'm not talking about people that are living in sin. I'm talking about those believers that are moving forward. They're in God's word. They are praying. They're seeking his face. But they're wondering why that area of their life, do you just keep pouring it down the sink? What that is all about. Let God go. Don't be afraid of the spaces. Don't be afraid. Be vulnerable. Be humble. Be willing to let go. This is our example from David. Go and say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one who should build me a house to dwell in? Hmm. For I have not dwelt in a house since the day I brought up the sons of Israel from Egypt, even to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent even in a tabernacle. Sounds like a content God. Wherever I've gone with all the sons of Israel, did I speak a word? With one of the tribes of Israel, which I commanded to shepherd my people, Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from pasture, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people Israel. I've been with you wherever you have gone, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great name, like the names of the great men who are on the earth. I will also appoint a place for my people in Israel and will plant them, that they may live in their own place and not be disturbed again nor will the wicked afflict them anymore, as formerly. Even from the day that I commanded judges to be over my people, Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also declares to you that the Lord will make a house for you. When your days are complete and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your descendants after you, who will come forth from you, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Peace out. Again, thanks for listening. Catch the next part of this series, usually Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. You can also find Underground Crowds on Twitter, Patreon, Bandcamp, or undergroundcrowds.com.